Mike, it's very nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you, too. You're here with ATM Fox, All Time Media. Welcome to the channel. I'm here to give a voice to the voice list. How old are you, Mike? 32. 32, okay. Okay, where are you from, bro? I was born in, I was born in the Ukraine, Odessa. Really? So really, it was like, it was the USSR. Like when I was born there, Soviet Union still. So we still, because it's Ukraine, we still consider ourselves Russians. I speak Russian and all. Came over here when I was one. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you, you are, your parents, they, they're, one of them's Russian or are they, are they both? They both Russian? No, they both. I, I lost my mom. I lost my mom when I was a kid. My dad got indicted back when we lived in Brooklyn. Mm. My dad went to the feds in 95. My mom killed herself in 96. Mm -hmm. I was raised by my pop's husband. I mean, my pop's, my fault. My pops' his, uh, wife. Pops' wife. Yeah. yeah, his real wife. Yeah. She raised me and took me in. And what was your childhood like growing up? Good. It was good. It real like, real culture based. Real loving, real caring. You know, they dedicated themselves to me for real. You spent the majority of your childhood in, in Brooklyn. No, I, I moved to Philly when I was, uh, like nine to ten. Moved to Philly. Moved to the Northeast. Um, went to one elementary school here, middle school, went to Baldy, went to Washington High School. Mm -hmm. Okay, you graduated? No, I got my GED, juvenile placements. So, yeah. What was um, it like uh, in juvie? I got locked up in 06. I was 15 years old, went to Glen Mills. I wish I would have took advantage of it for real, honestly. Because, you, like, you know, when you were a young boy, you run in the streets. You got to got that mindset that, like, prison's cool and shit. Like, it's, like, you know what I mean? Like, Okay, you felt like it was cool. Like, not that it was cool, but, like, you feel like Being you get thug. through it. Like, yeah, like, you got this thuggish mindset. You think you can survive it. You know what I mean? Nobody in your neighborhood's really going through it. And when you go through it, you feel like you got this reputation. But I went to Glen Mills. I ran from the mills. I ended up, uh, I ended up running from uh, Glen Mills, got locked up. Uh, they sent me. They committed me to the state. Sent me to Whitehaven. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to U4 Street Camp number two, got my GED in 07, I was 16. Mm -hmm. um, after that, came home, got locked up again, went to Newcastle Secure, did a year in Newcastle Secure. Um, mm. Came home when I was 17. What you kept getting locked up for? Robberies. 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 Just always as a kid, I guess I always try to get it myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, no role models growing up? Uh, or good ones? If yeah. You, you had role models? My mom ended up buying the apartment building we lived in when I was like 14. Mm -hmm. So the old, this old head that moved in from underneath me, they were in a lot of apartments for black old head named Jazz. And a white boy, Russian boy from the Northeast and shit. I'm saying, oh, hey, oh, hey, just came over from the feds. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was getting that little bit of paper. You know I mean, so at this time, it's 05. So, you know, he bought the 06 charger with that. Me and it, the first year it was out. Right. No, oh, hey, would give me all his hand me was Like, mm. oh, hey, wear a pair of Air Forces for a day. Give me them joints. Pair of mm. for a day. Give me them joints. Took me to my first powerhouse. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, hey, oh, from the rip, schooled me from the door. It was like, you know, you white, bro, like, Russian. You had two choices in life, bro. You got jet with the streets. And you got to be successful in either one of them. Mm. No loyalty in it, ain't no love in it. No, you know? Streets ain't fair, everybody, you said? Oh, the streets ain't fair. Oh, they ain't fair. No, no, ain't fair. Because no matter what, no matter what you think you instill in your mind about loyalty, about friendship, everybody's got their own path to go down to. Mm -hmm. So you can grow up with somebody and say, you know what, bro, you're my boy for life. We're going to get this money together. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is everybody's own self-interest. What they got. The only thing that matters to them is whatever they got going on. Right. For their future or their family. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think from an early age, we instill this false sense of security with our friends. But we should be having it with our families. Agreed. You know what I'm saying? We be in, in the street so much that we get caught up and we fall in love with the stuff that is not permissible in our households. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Our friends give us something that our parents can't. Or, okay. you know what I'm saying? So we, we fall in love with the idea of the things we can't have. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But 
in order to get those things without any like schooling or trade or you gotta turn to the easy way, the fast way. Right. It's robbery, drug dealing, whatever it is, whatever your twist is. You know what I'm saying? You go to it and you realize that time is a fleeting thing. And before you know it, I was 15 years old. So think about that. That was about 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. If you would have told me 17 years ago that 17 years from now I'd be in Kensington, homeless, no family, by myself, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't believe you. I wouldn't believe you. By then I would have thought I would have been somebody or I would have been a rapper or you know, you, you, you have all these things of what you think right. is going to happen. And they don't. the problem with wasting time is you can't get it back. That's exactly what it is. It's a waste. When did your drug habit start, sir? Uh, my drug habit started when I was, I smoked weed when I was younger. But my, 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 like my opiate habit, like my harder drug habit, mm -hmm. really didn't start until I was like 20, I'm going to say, like 20 years old. Perk mm -hmm. 30s had came out, mm -hmm. and my homie introduced me to them. My homie was like, yo, bro, take half a joint. I'm like, no, bro, I don't do pills. They have a Perk 30. It was on ever since. Got the, the Perks real fast. Started doing them. Um, all the Russian boys back then up, up in my neighborhood, I'm in Somerton, like, bus was that area. Mm -hmm. They was all getting their EMT licenses back then. So I just got home from Newcastle. Turned 18, was an adult now. Got, ended, ended up getting locked up, went to the House of Corrections for a robbery, me and my man. Got out mm -hmm. and went to trade school. So when That's I went good. to trade school, I went for heating and air conditioning out in Broomall, like uh, Kaplan Institute. My man from the door was like, yo, bro, pull out of that joint, switch your credits over, go to Star Academy on Washington Boulevard. Go get your EMT license, bro. You only gotta go to school for nine months. Get your first responder, and you'll be good. So boom. Got my first responder license in nine months, was an EMT. Only picked up dialysis patients. So me and my homie would ride around in the ambulance, pick patients up, and then sleep. Like literally, we was a taxi for the people that couldn't walk, you know, couldn't get from A to B. You know what I'm saying? But it was good money as a kid. Like I, I made a lot of money, but also I was meeting patients who was fucked up. And back then doctors were prescribing anything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was so easy to access anything. Mm. So I go to one of the patients' house. Whatever their medical condition is, they in a bad way. So I remember one time, you know, um, me and my man, we shoot out to South Philly, drop a patient off, and you got to transfer them from the, uh, from the ambulance to the, to the stretcher. stretcher. Right. And, and, and the lady at the time had no legs. So we really had to go through the whole process of moving her from the stretcher to the bed. So I go out to the living room, and you know, she got a she got a joint on a dining room table, pill bottles. And boom, I pick up one bottle, actually go on 30 milligrams. For 30s. So I go up to her, I ask her, yo, what you doing with these? And she goes, honey, they make me sick. I just leave them or I throw them out. Mm. I said, man, don't throw them out, I'll give you five dollars a pill for each pill. And it was off there. So little did I know, honestly, like, they were I, I was like at that time, the drugs wasn't having an effect on my life or the people in my relationships or the people around me. Mm -hmm. They were just so easily accessible. I think it doesn't become a problem until you're chasing drugs and that's the only thing you're doing to survive. Like, you, like nothing else ends up mattering because you got to figure it out how they get by every day. At that time, it was just there. It was there a lot. And you don't realize the effect it takes on your body. You don't really, I didn't, at that time, I didn't even know what addiction was. Is so, that your circumstance now? No, I'm getting high right now. I mean. I'm saying uh, as far as, oh, you say you're getting high right now? I'm getting high right now. Uh, what's, what's your drug of choice at this point? Honestly, uh, dope. A little bit of dope, a little bit of hard. And that's it. I don't shoot. I just I snort a little bit and smoke. That's it. And I think I do that. Cause I walk so much, honestly. I don't make up excuses, but I like it. I, I do the Fetty, or the drink, or whatever it is, in order just to ease my pain. You know what I mean? And I smoke the hard just in case I get too tired. Do you want to? Do you want to stop at all? Yeah, I do want to stop. I, I, you know what's crazy? I just got out of rehab three weeks ago. 
Just got out of rehab and I told myself that I wouldn't get caught up with it again. I don't do drugs again. I, mean, I even got the point now in my life where I'm even still lying to people like, yeah, I'm not gonna happen. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm cool, I'm easing by, you know, because it's embarrassing. What's stopping you? Stopping you from quitting, putting it down, man. It's hard, bro. It's depressing. It's lonely. It's sad, bro. Like, being at a point in my life where I sometimes I can't turn to nobody. You know what I mean? Like, I done lost so many people in my life, so many people that mattered to me. Mm -hmm. And I let so many people down that mattered to me. You know what I mean? And just like, I, I got to the point in my life where, like, I just don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. You know what I mean? It's kind of, it kind of gets to the point where it's like, what's the point? Or like, what am I doing it for? Or who am I doing it for? You know, and, and. You don't have any kids, Mike? I do. See you with the family tattoo above your eye. Yeah, I got, my, I got a son, I got a little boy. His, his mom, his mom, his mom OD in 2018. It was my mm. best friend. It's my heart, man. Now, how old is he? My son is 11. I need you. Need you, bro. Um, yeah, I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, you, you I got a son. son. Yeah. My son, my son is my world, you know. Mm -hmm. My son's better off without me, for real. You know, he, he's got, he's got his grandma who loves him to death. You know what I'm saying? And me and my girl, man, you know, we was kids. You know, she was beautiful, job there, gorgeous, man, good girl, man. And we had a good job going, man. We was together for three years. Like, mm -hmm. I was a young boy. She motivated me. I, like, the reason I went to school, she got pregnant. I was doing the right thing, you know? And, you know, being a kid, getting it so fast, you know, cheating on her, making those mistakes. Right. You know, we ended up breaking up. I ended up going to jail, and I lost everything. Your son um, knows you, right? He does, but he does. He knows you? That means, that means he needs you. He's wondering where you at, man. Yeah. I get back to him, man. I ain't going to get you down about that, but you got to get back to him. No, I don't. I just, you know, I just don't want to leave him again. You know, I, I don't want to be that, I don't want to be that guy that's in and out of his life. Because I know he's at a place now where he's happy, you know. He's, he's safe, he's secure. He got no pain in his life right now. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, he he's surrounded by good things. You know what I mean? And I can easily turn toxic. I can easily turn into a negative thing. You know, I could easily show up for a whole month and then do some stupid shit and disappear from his life and hurt him. You know, I just know I, I know I ain't ready. Once you get clean, it'd be a whole different story, though. You got yeah, any clean sure. time? A little bit, not much. You got to stay clean, man. You can not do much. it. You can yeah, do for it. sure. I know I can do it. I, I think I just got to get to the point where I want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know? And I just haven't, I don't know, maybe I just haven't found a reason that I want to do it for. That's what it is. You gotta, gotta you know I mean? stick to it, man. It's mind over matter. No, thing. for sure. It's for mind sure. over matter. It's definitely a mind over matter thing. And I, I don't know, bro. It's... Mike, you said you got your tattoos in prison? Yeah, I mean, I got them on, I got, in the beginning, I started getting a few on the street. Mm -hmm. Like that was my thing, going to work and going to school and then going to the studio late at night, getting tatted at the studio. And, when I got locked up, I got my prison sentence. Hold, hold on, what you, you, you was at the studio? You say you used to go to the studio, yeah. get tattoos? Yeah. And what happened? And say, so got caught up, man. I was home for three years and called my case, called my robbery case, went to jail, and got a majority of the rest of my, my joints in jail. Okay. Yeah. What's your favorite one? My favorite tattoo? Uh, I don't know, it's hard. Uh, if anything, I'm gonna say, honestly, the Jordan, my son, the, the Alex Jordan. That's it. Man, I got, just because it was one of my first ones, when he was born, it's his name. I ended up getting it done, his birthday on there. Hey. 4212? 4212. Who that? My son. Oh, that's your son? That's when he was born, yeah. Well, he 11 then. He 11. Yeah. yeah. How they... Um, I see you got your, your fingers and you got your wrist wrapped up. Yeah, bro. Splinters. Splinters got infected. So... So 
this was a splinter. Okay, you had a splinter. Splinters. Yeah. Just little splinters. How you how you come by that? Sleeping on something? Or? Sleeping outside, bro. Sleeping outside, Sleeping outside bro. man. Everything being dirty, I'm trying to, trying to keep it clean. So, you know, I wrap everything up, disinfect everything. Try to keep clean, but it's hard. Do you shoot, do you shoot your drugs, bro? No. I snort them. As you can tell, I scabs in my nose from it. What's that? My nose is all scabbed up. Scabbed up. Okay. That's you can really from, tell. That's from, uh, from snorting it, yeah. How often would you say you uh, intake your drugs? Uh, in one day, three times a day. Three times a day. Three times a day. Is it hard coming by uh, money uh, to get your drugs? Or? Surprisingly, I mean, it is, it is. But surprisingly, I know so many people. You know what I mean? So many people know me that if I extend my hand, I kind of get what I want. Mm -hmm. But I usually get it. On, like I, I usually go out and get it on my own. You know what I mean? Right. If anything, I'll go to one of the blacks. Like. Ask them to try for the day or hustle. And that's usually what I do just to get by, man. You'll Food work out. for them, huh? Yeah, work for them, man. Is it ever dangerous out here for you? You ever it feel is. like or not? Nah? It is. It is dangerous out here. Back in 2020, I was out here. I came home in 2020 right, right when uh, COVID happened. I came out. I was out here for like six months. I met a girl. Everything was going good. And I got shot twice. Yeah, okay, you got store. shot? Shot twice coming out the corner store. Ran, to, ran back to the crib. Cops ran down on me the next day, locked me up. Took me straight straight to Temple Hospital, straight upstate. And doing three they locked years. locked you up? Oh, you had a warrant or something? No, no warrant. They locked me up for a violation. So mm. if, when you were, when you were a state inmate, yeah. you can come back for basically anything. Right. They got something called like an Act 122. So when you come back as a PV, you end up doing six months, nine months, whatever you hit. So you had a parole violation. They violated me for a police contact. So just because the police had to come to my crib for a supposed involvement in the shooting, right. they locked me up. And that was parole's way of just saying, you know what? You got shot. We, we don't feel like, we feel like you're a threat to the community. So here, give us, the, give, give us these last three years of your state bed and you can go home. Mm -hmm. So my original state sentence was a three to 10. So I did the original six, came home, got locked up. Even the last three. I just came home October 1st. During all that time you had arrested and at the rehab, you were sober minded. So I'm, I'm assuming your mind was off the drugs. You wasn't even thinking about drugs, right? Because you, you're locked up, you no. can't think about them. No. What were you thinking about? As far as life, were you, were you thinking about uh, coming home and getting your life back together? I was. I was. I was writing a lot. A lot of writing, like, essays, music. I was writing a lot of music. Mm -hmm. Best way for me to like express myself. Right. You know, and I'm nice, no problem. So, probably probably one of my best times. Hobbies are good coping me mechanisms for getting clean, bro. Uh, Stick to it. And, and I had a lot of hopes, like, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, you know they had that saying where, you know, we, we plan God laughs, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I was sitting in jail in three years, right? Right. Any other time I was in jail, I think I would have been excited to come home. Mm -hmm. Real shit, like, you, you know, you at the end of your bed, you're like, man, I'm about to go out there. But I wasn't. For the first time, I'm in prison, and there was really no excitement for me to come home. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. Like, I was nervous, I was scared, but I knew what it was hitting for. Like, I knew what was on the other end of that door. Jail is easy. You know what I'm saying? Jail simple, you get three meals a day, you fucking got a roof on your head, you ain't got to worry about nothing. You know what I'm saying? But me, I would rather be homeless, fucked up on the streets than rich in jail. Jail is a stagnated place. You can't grow. You can't. But here you can do the same shit. You got a million people stuck down this jail with no cell phone. It's on the corner. This is jail for them. This is jail for them. So it's, it's, it's kind of the same shit. Where do you where do you see yourself in the next six months? Honestly, I see myself finding myself again. I need to find myself. I think I think the, the place I'm at is learning to love myself again. And 
finding my purpose, finding that thing that's going, that's going to drive me. I don't know what it is yet. Maybe I find it. Maybe it's like right around the corner waiting for me. Mike, I'm gonna give you my opinion, bro. You ain't gonna find it out here. No, for you sure. Gotta get up out of here. For sure. And I definitely am. I, I was talking to one of my exes and shit. And she hit me with the, why don't you just leave the state? Like, fuck it, bro. She's right. like, you're homeless any fucking way. Why don't you just be homeless with the fuck else? Like, yeah. what is the difference? She yeah. said, why don't you just shoot the Florida? Right. You don't even need no money, bro. She's like, just fucking go hitchhike to the side. Just leave. Get the fuck out of here. And she's right. I she think, make a valid point, man. I think I'm going to do it, bro. I think then in these next couple of weeks, bro, I'm just going to leave, bro. I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know where it's going to take me, but I think I'm going to have to do that shit. Like, I'm just going to just grab my arm. I'm not even saying I'm going to hop on a bus. I'll just start walking and see where that walk takes me. You do that, bro. And um, you keep in contact with me, bro. Oh, I will. Sure. I see. I, I shoot you a couple cash apps or something on your, on sure. your journey. Sure. I, I just want you out of here. Keep sure, it bro. I don't sure. want to see you out here. I, it's, it's a beautiful like a thing. Guy. No, it's a beautiful thing what you're doing too, man. Like, Everybody got a story, you feel me? Right. You know, I, I think I think the best thing is, you know, you never judge a book by its cover, man. You never know. That's true. You never know what that person, what that person might offer you, man. Like mm -hmm. that, what that person might tell you that might change something. You know what I'm saying? And it's facts, bro. Join All Time Media's Patreon for exclusive content and behind the scenes content and face to face live video chat. Thank you, guys. The link is in the description below.